Hey guys, this is Coach KP and this is my cousin Rav. Uh, he's from Baltimore. He's an entrepreneur, uh, a touring musician and a photographer. He has a lot of things under his belt. Uh, we're going to talk to you about personal development today and how personal development leads to spirituality and what the end goal of all of this is. Yeah, so really excited to be here. Right on. As I said, Rav is also my cousin mm -hmm. and you know, he's been on this, um, on this amazing journey to becoming a better human being on a daily basis. So we're going to hear from him uh, a lot of his views and I'm going to share some of my views on how we view, we've started to view life as we have started to, you know, grow um, and, and really try to become the best version of ourselves on a daily basis. Right. Um, right. So, uh, Rav, would you would you like to talk to our, our audience about what personal development means to means to you and where this journey has taken you? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Personal development is well, I, I view it in a very broad kind of spectrum. So you know, anything that helps me grow as a person, you know, that's what I view as personal development. Whether it be like you know improving on my speech. Or, you know, as a musician, it would mean for me to, you know, improve my vocal skills. Right. Or, you know, it could even be like playing guitar. But after that, like, you know, instead of just like developing on a particular skill, I mean, for me, the biggest part of personal development was uh, developing your mindset, you know, how, to, how you can program yourself for success. You know, that's what personal development meant to me. Right. Yeah. So, um, um, do some of these books like... Think and Grow Rich and The Richest Man in Babylon, all these books resonate with you? Oh yeah, definitely. I I I am a very, very like, you know, personal development, like these kind of self help book junkie. So I've read and crammed through all these kind of different kinds Trust of books. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, this man is well read. He he's read more books than anybody that I know, including myself, and I read a lot of books like if you guys need a book recommendation on personal development and anything regarding spirituality, this is the guy to go to, by the way. Uh, I'll try. I'll try to help. <laughs> yeah, guys, get audible for sure. That's very, yeah. that's very convenient, you know, whenever you're going for a ride or something. Especially when I have long drives, you know, I always take like audible with me and, you know, cramming all these like long books. And even on the way to Boston, actually, I was reading on a personal development book, we, you know, which is pretty interesting, actually. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, reading is the first way to develop is the understanding of what you want to develop into and you know there's a lot of books that we can read i mean uh, i used to read fiction a lot but now i've completely dedicated my time to reading non-fiction especially personal development because it's so big and such an important topic for me yeah no yeah definitely definitely yeah, yeah i had to kind of like you know, squeeze that fiction part of me to, uh, part out too because I, I, I used to like kind of like uh, you know uh, like watch Netflix all the time binge watch, <laughs> binge watch Netflix so it's, you know but I had to really give up that and also I, I stopped playing video games you know that, that saved me a lot of time trust me guys <laughs> yeah. yeah man that's huge like I used to be a big GTA player I still uh, have the games I here GTA. you know um, and, and, and you know another thing was Netflix I, I remember watching you know some of these shows like Breaking Bad and Mad Men pretty much on stop like overnight you know then yeah. I, the next day I would wake up and it would probably be as worse as getting drunk oh, yeah. on the night before and waking up in the morning right. and it's really not conducive to growth those right. those kinds right. of behavior exactly i mean those are great shows by the way <laughs> yeah exactly but at the same time it's it's you know it's up to you how you can you're gonna consume those shows right so if you keep watching them like regularly it becomes like an addiction you know <laughs> yeah absolutely i mean those these shows are really good they're meant to hook our attention oh yeah for sure the yeah. stuff hangers we know we know what that we is. know that we know that yeah so um you know um that's, that's some we, we've already talked about some great things how did you start like what was your initial calling to that pulled you towards you know doing personal development and you know getting into uh, this field and really being serious about it so for me i think um uh like even before what I knew personal development was, my first step into personal development was uh, when I started, um, you know, trying to improve my English because I came to America around like 2008 and, you know, I had really, really like when I would say like, okay, I, I used to work in a gas station back then. So when I would like talk to my customer and said like, okay, hey, it's 233. 
They would hear like 3.33 and I'm saying 2.33 guys, come on, it's $2.33, you know, yeah, but yeah. I, I guess my accent wasn't good enough so like I had to kind of like uh, work on improving a little bit of my accent so it would become more, uh, you know, like legible, uh, legible. so yeah. like people could understand, you know, it was just for the, because I used to work in a convenience store, you know, I had to make it convenient for my customers, right? So that's how it developed, but uh, I, I was just like doing that for a little bit of time. Then. After that, um, like I think it was around like 2011, 12, when I really started getting into personal development because uh, I was going through a dark time too. Like I was kind of depressed. I had a lot of these anxiety problems, and you know some of these like mental disorders can really hold you down, especially when you have something like borderline personality disorder as kind of diagnosed with that. So you know I didn't want to go to the like you know the medical route. You know, I did read a lot of book of psych right. psychiatry back then. There's a lot of drugs out there yeah. for, you know, any given yeah. so-called condition, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, like, but, but one thing was that, like, uh, you know, one of the books that I read that there was that started talking about, like, mindfulness and how you could, like, try to make yourself more resilient towards situations so you wouldn't be, like, shaken because of that. That's That's... The reason that I really got into like personal development just because I wanted to you know experience experience the best version of myself instead of just like staying in a victim mode you know I really wanted to break, break out of that initially yeah uh, how, how about you <laughs> yeah yeah I mean you know that that hit so many um, so many different chords here because I struggle with intrusive thoughts like that's you know anxiety is when you are not being true to yourself like when your thought process is fixated on the on the future and you know always really paranoid about what I'm doing wrong and how focusing on all the negative things that was taking me down the spiral I've had some real struggles with um, with anxiety and and you know ultimately panic attacks and you know I'm happy that at this point I have completely gotten rid of my anxiety um, and and you know I thank all the books that I've read all the people that I have listened to, you know, Rav, you know, you've been uh, you've been an inspiration with your music and you know your life, um, nice. and a lot of my mentors out there, you know, um, a lot of my peers that reach out to me um, because of all of these practices and all my writing and 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 all of what I have been able to understand as positive growth opportunities versus you know being in that negative mindset spiraling out of control i've really been able to pull myself out of the hole um you know um anxiety is not a good thing it's 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 just it's just your thoughts becoming more than what they really are you know thoughts are just thoughts at the yeah. at the end of the day yeah. you know yeah it's up to you on how you you're gonna label the thoughts how you're gonna like because you can always reframe the thoughts you know like it's up to you on how you base your reaction right to any kind of thought right so yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely really interesting yeah point. yeah man that that really you know um anxiety is something that i had a real deep relationship with and i know if if you've ever struggled with anxiety you know how real that could be mm -hmm. so i you know I'm, I'm grateful that you know yeah um i i'm able to um fight i've been able to fight that and keep it off stay down there it's important to to talk about you know spirituality and mindfulness mm -hmm. and and some of these practices that we have talked about you know mm -hmm. offline uh, maybe we can bring some of that into the into oh the yeah picture. definitely definitely the interesting thing was like uh you know i read a lot of books by tony robbins and you know i i, I was kind of a huh. huge fan of him because it literally changed the way i thought you know it gave me insight to a lot of different kinds of things like emotions you know like the different human needs that drive us to get get us to where we want but i had no idea like tony, tony robbins like because i went to upw last year unleashed the power okay yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's like a three day seminar now, right and how was the energy there it was Tony Robbins? insane it was insane like you know like Tony Robbins is all about like energy right mm -hmm, all mm -hmm. about creating the momentum so every 15 minutes like we'd be like jumping up you know on those like stadium chairs like yeah. little tiny chairs yeah he calls you know? it what state state change <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah. state change yeah, yeah. That, that's a huge part of his teaching exactly and also another thing that really was present there was like how he would intertwine like meditation and you know like conscious practices like that you know some would be like guided meditations some would be like he takes you really deep down the rabbit hole 
to dig in your anxiety and things like that using mindful practices and um, yeah those were a big part of his practices too so I feel like personal development is really really tied into like spirituality from different angles although like a lot of people you know they just do personal development but they leave out the spiritual part really out I mean it's a matter of preference yeah yeah, really yeah exactly yeah. I mean you know to each his own I, I suppose but yeah. And as you were saying there, you know, mindfulness has been huge for me. Mm -hmm. I had a life coach, uh, Synchro Shakti. You guys can look her channel up. That was my first real life coach that really led me towards mindfulness and Ho'oponopono and all of these great techniques to, to forgive yourself and forgive others and mm -hmm. really, you know, uh, go think about peace first, you know, as a resolution to something versus just passing out of control and right. letting your emotions get the best of you, you know? Right. So um, I, I really resonate with the mindfulness stuff uh, right. a lot. I mean, um, it's huge. They, they, those are huge practices. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. So uh, for, for your own, um, like, how has your m mindfulness been helpful to you and the practices that you do, I guess? Man, uh, I, I, have to, I have to say that there's this experience I had when I started really diving into uh, mindfulness. The first book I re read was The Power of Now oh, yeah. uh, by Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle yeah. and, and it really, you know, um, started shifting my, my perspective towards really being present in, in the moment and focusing on what is versus what was and what will be. Right. Um, I remember this one time, I, I know I shared this story with you yesterday, um, I was in this train one day and you know I was really in that mindset of really taking my mindfulness to a whole other level mm -hmm. and I saw this uh, homeless person embark upon the train and you know there was a lot of different types of smell coming out of that person and and, and you know uh, not the traditional beautiful person um, this person that had entered the train but I clearly remember I was like you know what I'm gonna try and see how mindfulness is gonna change this for me and and I was really then and there, I, I decided to take a deep breath and really see this person for who they are. And, and I was really looking into their persona and I saw the beauty that was oozing out of this homeless person, uh, you know, that had rags on their side and not the traditional, you know, fancy good looking person that we think is, is good looking, is beautiful, right? But this person was one of the most beautiful person uh, that I had really ever witnessed. And that was, that left a huge, impact on me um you know and then it made me realize the power of they being there and now and uh you know I, it has stayed with me ever since i can I, you know when i find myself drifting in and out of uh out of being really conscious about the present moment i can embody that feeling that i had from that day and it really helps me ground myself that that's an amazing story yeah. i mean I, I love that i mean when you, you when you were we were talking about this this weekend and um like when he told me that i was like just mind blown you know like i could i was there in that situation when he was telling me because you know that energy with, with how how much he felt at that moment i think it's still there you know it's real yeah it's yeah. real some of those things you you can't really words can't really express it yeah. you know yeah yeah, um, it's, it's, it's been amazing, and I and I know uh, Rav, uh, you you know you've you've been through so much, and you know you've learned so much, you've applied so much of it. I know um, people um, are always you know kind of struggling with money, and money is like a real thing, you know, in this right. world right now. And and you know some people still look at money as evil. Mm -hmm. Some people hoard it and don't want to let it go. And we know I know we talked about that a little bit yesterday. Right. Would you like to share with people? Um, your view on money and wealth and things of that nature. Uh, sure. I mean, by no means I, I'm, I, I'm gonna say like I'm financially wealthy at this moment, but like a couple of years ago, uh, when I was just you know creating my own brands, you know, like I had a video production company which didn't really go well, and I was really struggling back then, you know. And uh, there were a lot of times when I didn't want to go and get another job because I knew like how much my focus meant to grow that business you know and that's the time when i really like dedicated myself into learning about marketing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. social media and all these like you know things that would that's literally helping me right now to you know grow my other businesses that 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 i'm running right, right now right you know so like back then I, I got to a point where all my credit cards had maxed out 
and you know I had like no money to live off sometimes you know I had to sometimes borrow loan for, um, from my sister or from my family it's too real. It's you know it, it was very finance, hard time. finance is a real yeah. real deal yeah and I, it really shook me as a person you know I was like always like afraid of like you know uh, not having money every day but at the same time I fell into like really really like the darkest point of that you know pit hole where I I mean the only way I could see was up so you know when I was down there like I, I was like you know trying out some mindful practices like after all the anxiety was over I was like man I'm still not homeless though you know like if I want to get some money you know it's gonna come mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so like I didn't see of it as like a hopeless situation but I just went out like started using all the tactics that I learned you know and things like that but you know I didn't have I, I was still like broke at that point but my mind shift really changed right so you um, didn't see money as yeah. evil even though you didn't have it at that time oh, yeah, yeah. right yeah yeah exactly yeah it, it was like money is just a tool you know like if i have it it's great you know even if i don't have it it's not bad so what started happening after that was like you know the the desperate energy that i was trying to use to attract money <laughs> went away then money started flowing easily you know like right. all the clients that i used to call they would not like uh you know respond back to my calls or whatever they started calling me now because yeah, you know it's I was funny just how like, that works yeah right? yeah my energy was like very vibrant after that you know like wherever i would go like i was i all the desperation about not having money went away and then after that i it was almost like i had become like a money magnet or something you know so like then after that i also like detoured out of my other businesses and you know also uh you know started doing photography which you know i wasn't a photographer uh, by any means but i just wanted to like experiment with my camera then after that i started getting a lot of gigs in photography and you know this year i've probably done about like maybe uh, about 35 events so far and the year is not even done you know so yeah, yeah. that's huge that, that, that's, 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 huge. Insane. That's, that's insane that's insane yeah yeah so um you know again money is energy guys you know um, desperate energy does not attract good money for that matter you know so you have to really come in terms with what the current situation is mm -hmm. and really feel the aben abundance feel the aben ab Ben, Ben, feel the abundance, abundance. when uh, when it comes to money. Um, I hope that's a, that's a takeaway from what Rav just said uh, to the audience here is, you cannot be desperate about money for money to attract and and, and come to you. You have to really come from a place of abundance. True. So um, you know, one more thing I want to talk to you about today is what were the changes uh, or what are the some of the changes that happens when you embark on this journey of personal development and spirituality right so even talking about the money part you know i think uh, that 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 change really came from like trying to kind of uh, live more like mindfully and you know really accepting spirituality because i, I used to be a very skeptic person you know before i got mm -hmm. into personal development and mm -hmm. everything but after that like point you know i was just ready to try out new things and different you know like different options and things like that so and just like maybe yourself i started reading books by like Eckhart Tolle and uh, other people like Ram Das you know his teachings are more like grounded into Hindu philosophy um, other people uh, that I listened to was uh, Abraham Hicks yeah, oh yeah that's like huge law of attraction yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's just amazing yeah, exactly that's an amazing, amazing outlet for, for a lot of people yeah, um, you know yeah. when they start out yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a personal fan of right. uh, you know the whole uh, Hicks philosophy and it's, mm. it's it's had quite an impact on me right exactly so I mean reading is one thing but then I, after that I started like incorporating um, you know like yoga and meditation mm -hmm. into my daily routine that's mm -hmm. when the real mm -hmm. change started mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. you, you know like because every morning like i have a morning routine that i do uh usually right after i wake up mm -hmm. you know and um that really puts me into a state where i feel like okay now i'm ready to go out in the world you know and if i have to like uh uh it's almost like you're trying to conquer the world but not in a like negative sense of way but like you're trying to conquer yourself you know yeah at the end of the day. wow yeah. you, you, wow that's amazing guys you're trying to con conquer your situation and you're not right. really going against anyone yeah. because there's a lot of negative motivation where yeah. you are said or you're told to go against all of what's out there and that's really not what it is it's really pushing yourself without really competing with anyone because there is so much abundance out here for everyone right. to, to have a share of. So uh, Rav, uh, how long is your daily practice and 
what does it look like? Would you would you like to discuss that a little bit with with our audience here? Uh, sure. Um, so um, the practice that I do, uh, it's form of like a kriya meditation, which includes some uh, breathing techniques, and um, you know includes a lot of like uh, mindful breathings and pauses and things like that. And also during the day, I like to do meditations. You know, like just take a few minutes break here and there and do some. Uh, you know, heart-based meditation. That's the one thing that I'm doing right now. There's a channel uh, by a gentleman named Aaron Dowdy, and all, most of his uh, meditation is pretty much heart-based, really grounded on vibrations and things like that. So I do it almost every day now. You so know. You, you try to make it a part of your day. Yeah, exactly. Just make it a routine. Exactly. Yeah, that that's that's extremely important. I know. Yeah. Um, I know. I get a lot of emails and questions about. Uh, you know, hey, my meditation practice is not working. What am I doing? And my general, you know, question is, you know, what what are you doing in your practice, and how long are you doing it for? Sure. And you know, um, people say that, you know, hey, I'm starting out doing five to ten minutes, and you know, my thoughts never let up, and I get frustrated and things like that. Um, you know, I I don't think ten minutes even is is enough to have a re real serious meditation practice. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? Especially like when your mind is preoccupied with lots of thoughts. If you're having like a uh, day when you're kind of stressed out and you start thinking about all these things that's going on, um, to get to that point where you rid up all the thoughts, it takes some time. Trust me. Absolutely. No matter how much meditations you've done for like the past three years, it's not going to matter when you're right. starting a meditation with a stressful or in a preoccupied mind. So sometimes it takes longer, but sometimes, you know, there has been some instances when in, like... Where within, you instantly yeah, connect, you yeah, know, so Within a speak. minute, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I've been meditating for uh, three to four, year, four years now. And, um, you know, when I sit down, I generally, it takes me a good 10 to 15 minutes to even get into the practice really you know and and then i can get into the state of concentration and then the, there's layers of that concentration that keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper and you know by the time it's it's been an hour now i'm i'm really in the zone now i'm really connecting you know so yeah. it's not five to ten minutes as a beginner I, i'm really of the mind that you should at least have a 15 to 20 minute practice in sure. the in the morning set that time aside sure. for yourself wake up early if you have to you know yeah. uh, i'm just uh, that that works for me and i i think if it's not been working for you your five to ten minute practice try to increase it a little bit more right you know right sometimes it does like uh especially with the kind of uh the practices that i've been doing in the morning uh, you know like you have to like constrict your breath and sometimes you really don't want to do that you know like you have to kind of fight against your body to keep yourself in that zone and do that and like when I, it's around like 10 minutes mark, I usually notice like I'm so resistant to doing that, you know. So I think it's better to do like a longer form of meditation in mo most of the time. Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and, you know, um, I think uh, we can also talk about why, you know, why get into this spiritual practice? Why do meditation, yoga, mm -hmm. you know, what, whatever your practice may be, hypnosis, like uh, there's a lot of different modalities of healing and, and, you know, becoming a better person. Reiki, some people love to, you know, do Reiki on others and, you know, get Reiki um, from a Reiki practitioner. Some people like to get massages. I mean, there's so many different ways of processing the emotions that you have stored in your body True. and you know uh, what happens i mean a lot of people want to know what happens when you start embarking on this on this personal development mm -hmm. journey you know can you talk about some of the changes that you have experienced as you have you know get, gotten deeper into these practices so yeah i mean uh, sometimes you know i get frustrated with my uh, own results like uh, if i try to compare it day by like every day results or things like that but then again, I try to think of me back from like four years ago, especially when I was just starting out into this journey, right? I mean, I used to have like really reactive responses. For example, if somebody would like cut me off in the traffic or you know at work or something like yeah. that, I had really, really low resistance to just like, you know, be really impulsive and be like, hey, then show them the middle, middle finger. Yeah, give them the one finger yeah. salute, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So now... Uh, now I feel like that that reactiveness has really, really decreased. And sometimes it, I don't even feel that. I mean, uh, like yesterday uh, when, you know, we were hanging out in a coffee shop and I, I went to use the restroom. 
when uh like i didn't know if it was like a public restroom with like few different pissers or if it was just like a bathroom because i had never been to that place before right but mm-hmm. uh, i was just trying to open the door and it had no signs whatsoever except like it was a men's restroom <laughs> right <laughs> right no so, designation yeah exactly yeah. so i was just trying to push the door but at the same time another guy just like walked right out of it and i like before that it was locked you know when i was just trying to push it through and it was like you always knock fast you know and for a second, I felt that like a uh, response where I just wanted to be like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? Like, how am I supposed to know, right? Yeah. Like, it's a public Put him in his place, you know? Right, it's not <laughs> like a, a house where I'm trying to get in, you know? So like, uh, but, but at the same time, right then, I, I just went in, I was like, I just said like, I appreciate it, dude. You know, I didn't even say like, I'm sorry, you know? Because I didn't feel the need to apologize, you know? But at the same time, if it was me like four years ago, I might have made that into like a bigger situation and be like, you know, F you, dude, you know, and, you know, never, yeah. but, but, you know, y- you start becoming more mindful of those things, you know, and I was just able to, like, breathe in deep and let that go, and all of a sudden, like, it's gone, you know, like, your day is not ruined, <laughs> basically, because those little things sometimes really ruin the rest of your day, and it becomes like a... It's, it's a cycle, it's cycle. a spiral at spiral, that point, you know, yeah. Yeah, you know exactly. and then you're spazzing out on everyone yeah, for the yeah. rest of the day, yeah. because that point you know your your morning commute sucked you know yeah. and then you you got you know you yelled at somebody and yeah. it's just it's your pain body if you if you look at it from Eckhart Tolle's perspective keeps increasing and you're adding on to that um you know just to add to what Rav said the the biggest change you will see for yourself is how you respond versus reacting you know mm-hmm. and some of the examples that Rav gave you are very apt to the, to, to to this um definition of change um you 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 know sometimes you you may judge yourself harshly people tend to do that i used to do that a lot like why why has this not changed but then i started seeing the change in the way people were coming to me when before um you know maybe they weren't coming to me as often for help for advice or you know uh, just to be there uh, as a support system for them and and i you know opened up and i would go to people asking for help when I needed help because I feel that it's okay to show that side and be vulnerable with people. Like sure. when your heart starts to open, sure. you know, yeah. the vulnerability is yeah. not something that you don't do. It becomes something you do on yeah. a daily basis exactly. as we're doing in this, in this, exactly. in this episode. And, and, and for me, uh, one of the biggest lessons that I've learned out of all my personal development and uh, spiritual practices is that confidence comes, uh, like it grows exp- Exponentially. exponentially sorry about that word yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, you start uh being more vulnerable but you know you still do those actions that you need to take i mean for me like i think uh, most of my confidence came to me when i started just being vulnerable being myself and taking the actions you know when i had to like outreach to my customers and things like that uh, for my business and uh i think i think that's when i started feeling most of the growth in, in my life that's when you saw it yeah yeah, yeah. exactly yeah so hey uh, look this has been a great conversation and we're just gonna have to end it at some point and that point i think has has, has arrived at this point um the one message that i would like to share with you um you know before we close today and, and ravel too is don't wait to start on this journey if you're on the fence about you know picking that book up the power of now or Mm -hmm. you know uh, some of the book that rav has mentioned and will recommend if you reach out to him or myself um you know get get into the practice start meditating sit down you know get get on youtube look for these meditation videos start now and 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 don't wait because waiting is not gonna do you any good it's just gonna pile on all of these negative patterns that we've been operating in so start now and and, and you know really you'll start seeing results in no time uh, and, and, and when i say no time it, it depends on uh, on a person how they do it and when they do it but you will see the results and don't worry about the results right off the bat just yeah. start now exactly just to add to that uh, i feel like a lot of people wait for that moment when maybe they're feeling uh you know down or low to get started but actually i think it's the other way you know when you start when you're where you're at you will have more um more things to work with when you when you're in the, that zone when you're not feeling well or you're feeling depressed or mm-hmm. you know you're going mm-hmm. through some tough times in your life 
that that's when it becomes handy so yeah the thing is right. you need to start so now. don't wait for crisis yeah. to happen don't yeah. wait for bad things to yeah. happen to get started right, right? exactly right. that's that's the real message exactly. right exactly exactly yeah. yeah yeah hey uh so this is again my my cousin and and an entrepreneur that i'm really happy that is in our show today um and you know i i would like to thank you guys for taking the time to listen to us mm-hmm. reach out to rav for you know your book recommendations, your photography uh, questions, your entrepreneurship questions. This guy is a great marketer. Um, you know, um, Skinny is Green is his band on, on YouTube. You can find him everywhere. This guy has blogs, like the whole thing. So he will help you, right, Rav? Um, these are some Definitely. of the things that you can Definitely. help people with. If, especially like if you're into like, if you need book recommendations uh, uh, on any kinds of thing, you know, even on like uh, things like psychology and things like that. Um, just to make you grow as a person, I can definitely give you some recommendations that you might find helpful. Sure. Yeah. yeah, metaphysics, mysticism, we got all of that. Yeah. This is Coach KP. You can reach out to me anytime. Thanks for being on this channel. Rab again, peace.